Welcome to the second part of Actus Standby HA configuration. Let's go device, high availability, enable HA. Again, same group. We want to make sure that both of them are on the same group. Active passive, enable config sing. And now my peer will be dot one because this will be the dot two unit. Okay, peer HA1 interface, peer HA1 backup interface, dot one and dot one. Okay, select here. We'll set this an auto like the other one. And here we're going to leave this at 100 and we're not going to enable preemptive because I want PAO1 to become always the active if both units are actually online. And we'll leave this in OK. And now we're going to configure this. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Press OK. And finally, the data link interface. And you can see here, session synchronization. So we want to make sure that we use the HA2 or the data link interface as our session synchronization interface. And we'll press OK. And boom, let's go ahead and commit and watch the action. So let's take a look at HAOPA01. It's already completed. Let's take a look at the dashboard. And now you can see that I enable HA, but now I don't see anything about my peer because obviously I am still committing my changes. So let's go ahead and see how that looks now that the second unit is finished, is commit. Let's go ahead and uh, refresh and boom. Now you can see I just got my status with the act with my standby unit. My local unit, it's the active. And my peer is my passive unit. When we take a look here at my system logs. You can see that I build that HA group one between the two units. And you can see all the information that is being exchanged between the two members. So yeah, let's take a look at PAL2. Let's take a look at the same thing. Let's add that widget and make sure that we're good to go. And yes, we are. We're synchronized. So PAL1 has synchronized to PAL2 the config. I am matching the same versions across all my updates of my app, Tread, Antivirus, PanOS, and Global Protect. And I have my HAs up and running. Okay, awesome. Next, let's configure something and let's take a look at what it looks like on PAO2. And uh, you should be able to see that being replicated as well. Configure the two zones, the outside and the inside. Okay, and let's commit. If you take a look, I am committing, but let's go ahead and PAO2. I should not have anything configured here, right? But I am configuring in PAO1, so we should be able now to see the status of synchronizing in progress. So it's synchronization is in progress. That means that I'm actually sending that information to PAO2, so PAO2 should have the same config. Let's uh, wait until that's finished, and let's check on PAO2. Okay, so it's synchronized. Let's go to PAO2 and let's hit refresh. Boom. There you go. How beautiful is that, huh? We have both units with the configuration in sync. So we should be able now to configure all my necessary interface configs. And, and once we're done with that, we'll have a test machine and we'll ping to the outside and we'll perform a failover test. So let me configure that. And uh, after I am done, I'm going to continue on the video and we're going to go into the testing phase. Okay, so I will be right back. Okay, so I am done with the configuration. I have an internet reachability. I have my interfaces configured and I have both units with access to the internet. One is actually in standby as we configure HA active passive mode or active standby mode. And the other one, it's uh, forwarding the traffic. And I have a server that is sitting on the inside network. So if we check the config, we have a server that is on the 10.0.0.10 and the default gateway is 01 as you saw on our slide we have the server right here so this is the 10.0.0.10 and it goes out to the internet via PA01 currently we're going to do a failover test and we're going to see what's the, the behavior once I bring this firewall down and this takes over okay let's begin pinging here okay I am pinging to the outside so since we don't want to just shut it down because we want to do more testing after this I am going to suspend the local device. This is a very, very cool command. In the high availability settings, you go onto operational commands and you can suspend the active unit from forwarding traffic and then PAO2 will take over. So if you need to do some sort of failover, you got to trigger a failover event. You can actually suspend the active unit by clicking suspend local device. So let's go ahead and do that. 
we'll press OK here. And let's take a look at the dashboard now. It has been suspended. And now we should be able to see the peer becoming alive. And this guy has become the active. And let's take a look at PAO2. Let's check the dashboard. And yes, the peer has been suspended. And uh, let's take a look at the, at the server and see how it's looking. And there you go. If you can see here, we have two ping drops. So let me uh, scroll real quick. This was due to that outage event. So let me stop the constant ping. You can see here, once I did that suspend local, the Palo Alto or the server just lost two pings and then it continued just right away. So that's very cool. You have instantaneous failover. Your users will not notice that your environment went down. I just lost two pings. Okay, but that's one way of doing a failover test by, you know, if you lost the unit, you basically are going to see that behavior. You're going to see everything failing over onto standby. But what if you lost an interface? or you lost access to a particular network via that particular firewall and the other one is able to go there, you still want to fail over in case that happens. You don't want to, my firewalls are active, my interfaces are active, I'm not going to fail over unless the file auto actually goes down. No, you want to also fail over in case you're not able to reach a network and we can configure two items, link monitoring as well as path monitoring. Okay, we're going to go into device. And in device, you're going to see here under high availability, we're going to click link and path monitoring. I have link monitoring enabled. So if I lose one of the links, I am going to drop, but it's not going to take effect. And listen carefully, this is not going to take effect unless you configure a link group with the condition, right? So we want to add the interfaces that if for some reason I lose one of them, I want you to trigger a failover and move me to the standby unit. So let's go ahead and add that link group. We're going to call this the failover. And we're going to say a failover condition of any. So any of the interfaces that we're going to select here, if they go down, I want you to trigger a failover. So let's go ahead and do that. Select my outside interface. And I'm going to select my inside interface. So if one of those two goes down, the Palo Alto will do a failover to the standby unit. If I select all, unless both goes down, then I will have a failover event. So you want to make sure that you select any. There's cases where you want to do all. So because you might have a port channel, right? You don't want to have a port channel if it complete failover if the port channel only one interface went down, but the other one is forwarding traffic. I don't think it should take that hit or that event. So in this case, I'm going to select all and both interfaces, they need to go down in order to trigger a condition. Problem is, what happens if I had two completely different zones? I don't have that scenario. If I lose one, then I'm not going to have a failover. So in this case, if you select any, then it will actually trigger a failover if either one of those two goes down. So I'm just going to leave it as any. We'll press OK. And path monitoring. I think this is very important to configure. Path monitoring, I am going to ping something on my end of the network, either in the outside or the inside. And if for some reason I lose ping or I am dropping that traffic, I want you to trigger a failover. And we're going to configure a path group. And this is where you're going to select that behavior or the destination that you want to ping and the conditions, right? And how long often you want to ping and what is considered to be down. So after X amount of pings, you want to fail over. Okay. In this case, you have many options. You can have a virtual wire path. So if you lose that path in the virtual wire and the V-wire, and we discussed V-wire on previous video, you can do that. A layer two VLAN path, you can. Or in our case, we're going to do a virtual router path. So at layer three, I want to ping something. If I drop that traffic, I want you to trigger a failover. Add virtual router. And we're going to add our virtual router. So any virtual router that it's going to be used to send that ping probe, you're going to select it here. Failure condition, again, if any of the IPs I'm going to list here go down, any one of them, I want you to trigger a failover. I think, my personal opinion, for the outside, you want to make sure that you ping multiple outside IPs, not just single one, and then unless all of them goes down, then you want to trigger a failover, because the outside, they might have an issue, but the internet not necessarily is down, so you don't want to trigger a failover event if only one destination IP is down. So let's go ahead and click Add, and we're going to select those public IPs. Okay, so I am selecting 1.1.1 and eight 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 eight. So unless I lose both destinations, I am not able to reach them, then I'm going to trigger a failover because I'm selecting all. Ping interval, 200 milliseconds. So every 200 milliseconds, I'm going to be probing and checking that you're alive. If those guys are alive, we're good to go. If we're not alive, after 10 ping counts, I'm going to trigger that failover event. That's the threshold. If I don't meet 
my threshold, meaning that I am going over pain counts, I'm going to trigger that event because we're going to assume that uh, the, the destination went down. So we want to do that failover event. You want to be more aggressive, we'll lower this to five or even three. Three, you want to be very careful because maybe you just lost a ping. You don't want to drop the whole thing or fail over the whole thing if only three pings went down and then everything came back up. So you want to be very careful. You don't go too overboard with this. So I'm going to leave this in five. I'm going to press OK. And we are going to commit. Again, the reason you got to configure this, it's to have a true failover event. So if it goes down, you still have reachability. And because this is a high availability setting, you need to do this on PA01. This is not replicated. So if I configure this here, it's not going to be replicated because this is an HA configuration change. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing here. Okay, so I just configure all of them to save some time. It's exactly the same thing as I configure on PA02. So once this is done, we're going to do a failover test, but this time we're going to drop the outside interface and see what will happen and if we can see that our rule is actually working. Let me unsuspend my local because this was uh, suspended for our demonstration purposes. I'm going to make it a little local device again, make it active. And yeah, now it's leaving the suspended state. Once it's done, we should be able to do that new failover test. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disable the outside interface of PA01. And we should be able to see that path monitoring rule will take over and will trigger a failover to PA02. Go ahead and uh, go here. Okay, so we're in passive on PL2, PL1. While that's happening, I have my server pinging to 1.1.1. As you can see here, I am pinging to 1.1.1. I'm going to trigger that failover event. You should be able to see that we lost connectivity, but it should recover right away. Go ahead and uh, disable that interface. And sure enough, I just lost connectivity. And boom, I am back online. Let's go ahead and see how that looks on the PA. Boom. Non-functional, PA01, I just disabled the interface, the outside interface, and I just lost connectivity. And uh, let's take a look at here. And sure enough, I have an HA event because I lost the destinations IPs in my path group are completely down. So meaning I cannot reach both IPs configure in the path monitoring rule. If we take a look here, I am not able to get to that destination. So I am triggering a failover event to PA02. So this guy should be the active now. Alrighty, it's pretty cool. Make sure that you set this up. Make sure that you run HA redundant, highly available environment. Okay, everyone, in our next video, we're going to take a look at configuring the HA in active active mode. Thank you for watching.